Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Boscherini, and for our unit on exploring contact and non-contact forces, today we're going to explore pressure on a solid surface. So today we're going to see how pressure can be applied on a solid surface, and we're going to describe some effects of changing that pressure. But most importantly, at the end of this lesson, we should be able to answer this question. Does it really hurt to sit on a bed of nails? Uh, spoiler alert, it's really not the matter of the single nail. The matter is having a lot of nails. And as a first video demonstration, we're going to see how we can drive a nail through a piece of wood using a hammer. For our first demonstration, we want to see what happens if we try to drive a nail through a piece of wood. So, let's take our piece of wood, let's take our nail, but just to make things interesting, we're going to try to drive this nail by putting it with a flat side on the wood, so hammering the pointy side. I will take a nail holder so I don't have to uh, hammer my own fingers. I'll put this at the center of my piece of wood and let's see what happens. And as you can see, I was not able to drive a nail through the piece of wood. So let's try the opposite. Let's have the pointy side now towards the piece of wood and let's see what happened in this case. And as you can see, in this case, it was very easy for me to drive a nail through the piece of wood. So, as we saw in this very short demonstration, um, if we want to drive a nail through a piece of wood, uh, having the pointy end on the piece of wood is way more effective than having the flat end. But now, we have to ask ourselves, why is this? At the end, you have to think, um, we're applying the same force here. No, I was applying the same force with a hammer, uh, both when I was hitting on the pointy part and on the flat part. So there must be something else here that has changed and that has allowed the nail to be driven through the piece of wood. In the next demonstration, we're going to see now how we can peel an apple using a knife. As a second example, now we're going to see what happens if you want to try to peel an apple using a knife. So, here we have our apple, here we have our knife, okay? now. As a, as a first trial, let's see what happens if I try to peel the apple using the flat side of a blade. Now, you know most knives have a sharp edge and a flat side. And if I try it, you see I'm scraping a little bit the surface, but I'm not effective in peeling the apple. But if I try, on the other hand, the sharp side, and be careful with your fingers, with very little effort, I'm able to peel my apple, as you can see. So as we saw in this demonstration, if I want to peel an apple, using the sharp edge of a knife is way more effective than using the flat side or dull side. And again, we have to think, why is this? Because at the end, I was using more or less the same force trying to peel the apple, but with one side of a knife, I wasn't effective. On the other side, the sharp side, I was effective. As many of you might have figured out by now, it's, it's obvious that this different result in applying the same force but in two different scenarios means that it's not only the force that plays the role but also the surface area of contact between the object 
the, between the objects. So, for instance, in the case of, um, of a nail, the pointy end had a much smaller area than the flat end. The same goes for a knife. Now, the sharp end is, has a way smaller area than the other side. So, in order to, to put together these two, two um, uh, quantities, force and area, to describe a new effect, we have to introduce a new physical quantity. We will call this new physical quantity pressure. So we will define it, but in the next lesson, we're actually going to have um, a mathematical formula to define it. Pressure is the combined effect of force and area. And there's a couple of key things uh, we have understood so far. Now, how we can make pressure bigger? Of course, we can make pressure bigger by applying a bigger force, but also, and this is really important, by making the area of contact, remember, now we're talking about contact forces, okay? So, by making this area of contact smaller. So, um, uh, a, sh a very sharp knife, a very pointy nail will be way more effective in increasing the pressure, so in driving the nail through the wood or in peeling the apple. On the other hand, and we're also going to see cases where we want the pressure to be low, how we can decrease the pressure, of course, by applying a smaller force, but also by um, increasing the area over which we are applying this force. And for once, I want to leave you with a couple of uh, questions, a couple of uh, case scenarios where you have to think about, use your knowledge, uh, the, the knowledge you've gained about pressure, and try to think, okay, what is happening here? So I present you with a picture. I'm not telling you anything about what's happening in this picture. And I'm asking you, what do you think is happening here? And again, the point is really using ideas about pressure. I mean, you can clearly see that this person is wearing a snowshoe on the left foot, okay? But something is happening here. And, and using your ideas about pressure, try to think and write down your ideas. Uh, try to think what is happening here. There are multiple uh, possible answers. Uh, I must tell yourself, I don't know what's happening in this picture. Uh, I found this on the internet. I don't know what is the story before and after. So we have to make our own story about this picture. But the important thing, we have to use ideas about pressure. And just to understand even better the relationship between pressure, force, and area, let's, let's consider this case. So one of you, Fatima, is standing with both of her feet on a bathroom scale. Uh, and she recorded her weight. Doesn't matter how much it is, she recorded her weight. Okay? Then she lifted her, for instance, left foot. Okay? And she stood on the scale with only one foot on it. Okay? So try to picture the situation. Now, what do you think will happen? And what I'm telling you is three possible outcomes. First outcome uh, the weight and the pressure applied on the scale will both increase. So we have an increase in pressure and increase in the weight recorded by the scale. That's the first scenario. Second possibility, the weight and the pressure applied on the scale will both stay the same. So there will be no difference from Fatima using both her feet or lifting one of her feet. The third possibility is the weight will stay the same, but the pressure will increase. Now, what is important here is not only that you think, okay, it's number one, number two, number three, but also try to reason, try to give a motivation for your answer. In class, we're going to discuss this case scenario and the previous one. And in the next lesson, we're also going to see the formula to find the pressure applied on a solid surface, but for today, that's all. Goodbye from Mr. Boscarini.